He's George Reister. He's Aaron Torres, and I'm Dan Beyer, our Fox Sports Radio Selection Show special. Be sure to join Fox Sports Radio's M Drive Million Dollar Bracket Challenge. That's right, the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge. If you fill out a perfect bracket at foxsportsradio.com, you will win $1 million. Compete against Fox Sports Radio hosts and fellow listeners. The listener in first place, even without a perfect bracket, wins a $1,000 gift card. Second place gets $300, and third place takes home $200. You can pre-register right now and get official rules at foxsportsradio.com even before the brackets are released. Yes, it's the Fox Sports Radio M-Drive Million Dollar Bracket Challenge. Refund, Refind your prime with M-Drive. My goodness, I miss this. Like it is like we had, we've gotten an NBA finals, we've gotten a World Series. They were delayed, we've gotten all that, but we missed a selection Sunday and a selection show and it is back for the first time in 2 years and I cannot tell you guys how excited I am. I I am I am very curious. I know that the the names of Colorado State and Drake and St. Louis aren't what moves the needle when it comes to sports talk radio or when it comes to college basketball. But those are the schools that we're looking at. And I think one of the biggest the biggest dilemmas that we have as this bracket is about to release is do the haves or the have-nots get in when it comes to those final at-large bids? Are we going to get a mix? We're going to find out in just a moment. I can see Greg Gumbel. It's it's like I, I, I want to put words in his mouth, guys, as I'm sitting here watching the screen and I can see him say from our partners at, you know, whatever sponsor. Uh, the number one overall seed in the tournament will be the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Absolutely no surprise. Uh, unbeaten season, <laughs> West Coast Conference champions. They got a little bit of a scare on Tuesday night from BYU in that title game. But uh, I think that helps Gonzaga as, as we find out that they are officially the first uh, seeded team in the tournament. I think that Gonzaga, as you look at them, I think Saturday or Tuesday's outcome against BYU ended up in a win, kept their perfect season alive, kept, you know, kept them focused. And I think that is a that is a good thing from Gonzaga. So they're going to be the first seed in the West region. They're going to face the winner of the Norfolk State at Norfolk State Appalachian State game, which is the first four game that will be played on Thursday. So this is going to be a Saturday game. So it's Gonzaga against the winner of the Norfolk state appalachian state game in the 116 matchup on saturday in the west region so now the brackets are starting to be released we are seeing this oklahoma ends up being an eight seed so the sooners from the big 12 will be an eight seed with a record of 15 and 10 they will be playing and i don't have the exact locations of these games usually they would say we'd say oh it's in boise or it's here or there we don't have that we have oklahoma's opponent a former Big 12 opponent, now in the SEC, Missouri, is the nine seed. So you're going to get an old Big 8 matchup in an 8-9 matchup in the West on Saturday in the NCAA tournament. The fifth seed in the West is Creighton, who lost in the Big East title game to Georgetown yesterday. Blue Jays come in with a record of 20-8. and eight. The Creighton Blue Jays are the fifth seed in the West region. On Saturday, they will face the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara, winners of the Big West Conference, who uh, was able to get that victory last night over UC Irvine. So UCSB is your 12th seed at 20 to 4. The 413 matchup also to be played. Again, these games are Saturday games, Saturday, Monday. The fourth seed Virginia Cavaliers. Had to withdraw from the ACC tournament, but as we just told you a moment ago, they have been cleared. They will play. On Saturday, as the four seed, a record of 18 and six for the defending national champions. It was two years ago. Virginia, now a four seed. They've got the Ohio Bobcats out of the MAC as a 13 seed. So Virginia against Ohio in the first round. So our first first nine teams are out. And now we go to the bottom half of the bracket to the West region. USC is in as a six seed. So USC will be playing on Saturday against the winner of Wichita State and Drake. So Wichita State is in. Drake is in. I think that is huge. We'll get your guys' response in just a little bit. But those two teams were squarely on the bubble. You saw some bracketology uh, brackets saying that 
Wichita State was in and Drake was out. Some had Drake in and Wichita State out. Both are in. The three seed in the West region, the Kansas Jayhawks, another team that had to withdraw from their conference tournament. Kansas is the three seed. They get Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington, winner of the Big Sky Conference, coming in at the, as a 14 seed. The seven seed, George Reister's Oregon Ducks, coming in at number seven. Again, in the West region, they'll be playing on Saturday. They go up against Virginia Commonwealth, VCU just lost the A-10 title game earlier today to St. Bonaventure. Oregon in the in uh, VCU. And the number two seed playing on Saturday is Iowa. This is this is how I thought it would play out, Aaron, to, to, to seeing how this was. I guess they weren't afraid of the rematch. Maybe they thought it was going to be further down the road. But Iowa gets the two seed, and they will face the 15th seed Grand Canyon Antelopes, led by Bryce Drew. Grand Canyon, winners of the WAC Conference, get the automatic bid. So there is your West region. Don't have the locations of these games, and times will come out later, guys. But there is your first region of the NCAA tournament. Aaron, first crack at this. As you look at this West region, what stands out to you the most? The first thing that stands out to me is I need to be removed from this show and fired because the two seed, Iowa, the three seed, Kansas, the four seed, Virginia, Gonzaga has already beaten this season. I don't want to. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. This feels an awful lot to me. Like CBS wants Gonzaga to make a sweet little run here, easily to the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, if not Final Four. George, you see this West region. I know your Oregon Ducks are in it. Uh, I'm sure that stands out the most to you. But with these, this first bracket, what do you see? Well, first thing is is that well from a from an Oregon pers- perspective, I don't like the the Iowa matchup in the second round if they win because uh, I don't know who's gonna guard guard Garza. First thing, so that's but that's hopefully one of a Styles make make fights thing. But when it comes to what Aaron was saying about about a setup for Gonzaga. It, it's one it's one of those things to where it's like Gonzaga beat everybody. So it's like who who could you put in their bracket that they didn't all already beat? And it, and it's like should you penalize other teams with going up who have a stronger strength of record or what or whatever and not putting them in the same bracket as as sure. Gonzaga? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just just because they didn't get a chance to play Gonzaga, no. Sometimes you gotta you well, know have a second bite at the apple because you didn't put yourself in a better position. Sure. Maybe it may. We'll we'll dissect this whole West region and the other three regions that will be released coming up next. We will release the rest of the bracket here on Fox Sports Radio. It's Selection Sunday. Keep it locked here. I'm Dan Byer. He's George Reister. He's Aaron Torres. This is Fox Sports Radio. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio. Radio. It's our Fox Sports Radio Selection Sunday special. I'm Dan Beyer. He's George Reister. That's Aaron Torres. Yeah, you got three of us today to tackle the brackets as they're being released. Here are the matchups in the South region as we're live from the Farmers Insurance Fox Sports Radio Studios. Call 1-888-FARMERS to switch, and you could save a bundle on your auto insurance. The top seed in the South and getting the second overall seed in the tournament, the Baylor Bears. Baylor will end up facing Hartford in the game on Friday. So these are all Friday games in the South. The eight seed, North Carolina going up against Greg Gard and the Wisconsin Badgers. Badgers coming out of the Big Ten. They are the nine seed. The five seed in the South region, Villanova out of the Big East have been hampered. Uh, injuries late. Villanova's kind of fallen from one of the top 16 schools that you'd, you would thought would get a top four seed. They're a five seed. They've got Winthrop, who's at the 12 seed. Purdue and North Texas will play in the 4-13 matchup. In the 6-11 matchup in the South, Texas Tech goes up against Utah State. So Utah State is in. Arkansas gets the three seed against Colgate. Then it's Florida and Virginia Tech at 7-10 in that matchup in the South. And Ohio State is the two seed in the South. They will 
will face Oral Roberts. Again, all those South Region games taking place on Friday. Again, all of these games taking place in Indianapolis or surrounding areas. We now move to the Midwest region. Winners of the Big Ten in the third overall seed in the bracket, the Illinois Fighting Illini. Big Ten tournament, I should say, because there was a Michigan was the regular season or deemed the regular season crowd, but Illinois wins the Big Ten tournament. They are the number one seed in the Midwest. They will face Drexel in games that will take place on Friday. The 8-9 matchup in that Midwest region who will face the winner of the Illinois Drexel Dragon Showdown. The 8 seed, the Ramblers of Loyola of Chicago. Out of the Missouri Valley Conference, Loyola of Chicago, the 8 seed. They will end up facing as the 9 seed in that bracket. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, winners of the ACC, Georgia Tech gets a nine seed. You'd have to think yesterday's win against Florida State helped them, and while maybe Georgia Tech was safe, maybe that win yesterday didn't bump them up as much as they would have hoped. Five seed in the Midwest region, the Tennessee Volunteers. They will also be playing on Friday. All these games, by the way, on Friday, taking on the Pac-12 tournament champion, Oregon State Beavers. So Oregon State gets in as a 12 seed. The oh, automatic they bid. In. <laughs> yeah, the automatic bid from that tournament. And the four seed in the Midwest region, Oklahoma State. They fell to Texas in the Big 12 title game. I thought Oklahoma State, maybe if they would have won yesterday against Texas, could have had a, had a chance at a two seed. They end up being a four seed. They have got Liberty, so Cade Cunningham and the Cowboys will take on the Liberty Flames in the 4-13 matchup in the Midwest region. Bottom half of the bracket, again, these games also on Friday. Just don't know the exact locations in the Indy area yet. San Diego State, out of the Mountain West Conference, they are a six seed, the Aztecs back in, winners of of that conference. On Friday, they will be taking on... We are about to find out. They're, they're, they're pausing for effect here. It won't be a play-in <laughs> game because all the play-in games of the first four are on Thursday. Syracuse. So it's San Diego State against Syracuse. Syracuse is in. If I'm UCLA right now, if I'm Colorado State, if I'm St. Louis, I am not happy. I'm nervous. Yeah, yep. super big time. So 6-11 in the Midwest region is San Diego State against Syracuse. The three seed in the Midwest region, again, playing on Friday, will be... As we, uh, I, I should have had a drum roll here. That, that's the, that's the only thing that, that I needed. The three seed in the Midwest region is the West Virginia Mountaineers from the Big Twelve Conference. So West Virginia gets a top seed. Interesting that they are the three seed, and Oklahoma State ends up being the four seed. Next up for West Virginia in their first tournament game. Moorhead State. So Moorhead State is in with a record of a 23 and 7. Moorhead State beating Belmont in their tournament championship game to get to the big dance. Seven seed in the Midwest region, also playing on Friday, the Clemson Tigers from the ACC. So Clemson is a seven seed, and they will be facing Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights from the Big Ten get a 10 seed, so Rutgers is in. And right now, I, I, I'm guessing, I before the show, I thought that you could see this play out this way. Houston ends up getting the two seed in the Midwest region with Illinois. So the Houston Cougars, who dashed the dreams of Cincinnati, who tried to steal a bid a little bit uh, earlier today. The next up for the Cougars and Calvin Sampson, Cleveland State. The Cleveland State Vikings get in as a 15 seed with the automatic bid. Uh, quick, quick, just just thoughts on that, and I'll ask you, Aaron. Were you surprised West Virginia got a higher seed than Oklahoma State did in this bracket? I mean, considering Oklahoma State beat them twice in the last week of the season, yeah, I would say so. A uh, lot of just surprising kind of bubble stuff, if you will. Dan, um, you know, you mentioned Drake a minute ago, uh, Utah State being in, Syracuse being in. As you said, Dan, if I was a Louisville fan right now, if I was a St. Louis fan right now, if I was even a UCLA fan, as George referenced, to lead this hour, I'd be worried right now. Yeah, there's, there's, the, oh, yeah. Go ahead, George. Yeah, there's, there is, 
with with Utah State Syracuse that that's about a you know <laughs> that's about a it's clear of an indication about what's going to happen with UCLA I think a, as we could possibly see but um th- to uh, Aaron's point. Or, no, no, go on. No, I was, I was, I was just going to say let let's do this because we've got a little bit uh, a break in the action, if you will. Let's go to the news desk because it's a busy, busy day in the world of sports. We've got a bit of a breather. Three quarters of the bracket released. We're waiting for the final region. Let's go to David Gascon to give us what else is happening on this crazy day. What's going on, Dave? Hey guys, outside of that, the tables are set. But just to kind of give you a recap on today's games. Illinois won the Big Ten. They beat Ohio State. Uh, American Athletic. Conference Conference went to Houston. SCC is grabbed by Alabama. St. Bonaventure won the Athletic 10. And the Patriot League was owned by Colgate today. So that's those automatic qualifiers that you guys were mentioning. Uh, on top of all of that, the NBA, OKC beat Memphis by 6. Golden State by 12 over Utah. That ball game's gone final. Steph Curry had 32 points, 9 assists in the victory. Justin Thomas wins the Players' Championship. One stroke in front of Lee Westwood as he takes it. Meanwhile, what's going on in the National Football League? Drew Brees of Fisher retires after 20 seasons, five in San Diego with the Bolts, and the final 15 in New Orleans. They also restructured Taysom Hill's contract, four years, $140 million, and every year on that deal is voidable. Aaron Jones signs an extension with the Packers, four years and $48 million. 13 of that is guaranteed. Bears have re-signed defensive end Mario Edwards. Dan, also some good news for you. Next Sunday, if you come in here and I see you, we're going to have lunch catered by Iowa Sam. Oh, really? This will be after Grand Canyon defeats Iowa on Saturday. <laughs> the wager has been set. It was Never set earlier to today. Oh, I love it. Never agreed so, to Dan, that. come on down. <laughs> Never agreed to that. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I, lo- I if love Grand it. If Canyon beats Iowa, I yeah. will I will celebrate. I, I might buy lunch. Here, Dancing on the grave of Iowa Sam. Here's, oh. here's why I think that, that Iowa Sam is so near and dear to us. We all knew that Iowa, Iowa was going to be in the tournament. We all, we all knew that. We, th- we, I think we all knew they were likely going to be a two seed. But he stood up and cheered in the other room when their name came on the board. Just like are you a, serious? Just like a player would. Like it wasn't. <laughs> it's not like they were on the bubble and like they got in. Like he stood up and cheered and was. I assume he was singing the fight song. I I can't see through the glass or hear through the glass. But Dan, is that the equivalent of Notre Dame's fan base charging the field after beating Clemson last season? <laughs> no, 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 come no. On. That's oh. not even My close, bad. dude. That. that that would I be like it. Notre Dame fans charging the the field after oh. beating, uh, you know, Central Michigan. Oh, man. Man, that's so good. Uh, we are coming to you live for the Farmers Insurance Fox Sports Radio Studios. Call 1-888-FARMERS and you can save a whole lot of something on auto insurance. I'm Dan Beyer. That's George Reister. Aaron Torres is here as well, breaking down these brackets. And our final region about to be revealed in the East. The Michigan Wolverines get the number one overall seed. This is going to be a Saturday game, so Michigan likely or Michigan will play either Mount St. Mary's or Texas Southern, as though to, those two 16 seeds will end up playing in one of the first four matchups coming up on Thursday. So you kind of knew that that was going to happen, that you were going to have a play in uh, the or the first four games in this bracket. You're also going to get it later on in the bracket, whether it be at a 12 seed or an 11 seed. That's where we are likely to find the other first four matchups. So Michigan, the number one seed in the East, they get the final number one. LSU, who just lost in the SEC championship game today to Alabama, gets an eight seed. So the LSU Tigers are in. A next up for LSU in that matchup, or first up for LSU in that matchup. Again, these are games are going to be taking place on Saturday. LSU will end up playing the ninth seed as, again, they draw it out. So where's my drum roll? St. Bonaventure, don't even need the drum roll. Bonnies are in. They are uh, conference tournament champions in the Atlantic 10, beating VCU earlier today. So St. Bonnies gets in. This is a big reveal right here because this is where you could see uh, a first four matchup being revealed. The fifth seed, Colorado, runners up in the Pac-12 tournament, uh, losing last night to Oregon State. They are the five seed in the East region playing on Saturday against the Georgetown Hoyas. So Georgetown gets a 12 seed. So Ooh. Georgetown is in the bracket after winning the Big East tournament. So Colorado takes on Patrick Ewing and the Hoyas, the four seed in the East region. 
in the 413 matchup will end up being as now we need the drum roll. Florida State. There it is. Florida State is the four seed. They fell in the ACC title game last night to Georgia Tech. So Florida State gets the four seed and they will face the 13 seed. Drum roll, please. It's a great time filler. UNC Greensboro. UNC Greensboro Spartans. The uh, alma mater of one Brian Fenley here at Fox Sports Radio. UNC Greensboro gets in. Hey. All right. This is it. BYU gets the sixth seed. This is likely where we're going to find who's bubble burst or not. BYU the sixth seed. It's going to be in this 11 matchup. This will be a first four matchup. So what two teams got in that will be playing as the 11th seed? It will be... Michigan State and UCLA. What a oh, first they four got in. showdown. Michigan State and UCLA will be playing on Thursday. The winner will get BYU on Saturday. The three seed in the East region will end up being... There, there's the, the Michigan State UCLA game is is awful news for the likes of Colorado State, St. Louis, uh, Ole Louisville. Miss, yeah, Louisville, Boise State. There could be a seven ten matchup, but yeah, with those schools right now, Michigan State and UCLA getting in. Texas is the three seed in the East. Longhorns, winners of the Big Twelve tournament. Of course, they didn't have to play a semifinal game against Kansas, but hey, I'm not going to hold it against them. Abilene Christian is the fourteen seed in the final. Four slots in the NCAA tournament. Listen, Alabama's going to be the two seed, so there's going to be no drama there. But Texas will face Abilene Christian on Saturday. Aaron Torres' UConn Huskies are the seven seed. Now, could you see, you know, I think it's going to be, it's the Maryland Terrapins. And we haven't seen Rick Pitino's Iona Gales in yet, so I think we're going to get Alabama and Iona in this two fifteen game. Alabama is the two fifteen is the two seed in the East region, and the fifteen seed, the final team, not placed in the bracket, but the final revealed team in the sixty eight field sixty eight team field will be the Iona Gales. Alabama will take on Iona in the two fifteen matchup. Your field of 68 is set. There they are, guys. Aaron, I'll start with you. Just a quick thought on on now that these brackets are out. We find out Michigan State and UCLA will be playing in a first four game. Wichita State plays in a first four game. Now that it's here, what are your thoughts on what was revealed? First of all, just great to have uh, just great to have an actual bracket. Dan, I don't know if you want an update on this, but there are four teams that are will essentially be on standby that were just announced due to a if, for a potential COVID pause. It looks like Louisville, Colorado State, St. Louis, and Ole Miss. So I don't mean to steal your thunder here. No, You're my that's point fine because that's but, that, that's going to be a, that's it's going to be a topic of conversation because this also tells us that Louisville was the first team out of the NCAA tournament. They were the they were the 69th team. Like when you try to break down, so now you'll be able to take Louisville's resume and compare it to Michigan State and UCLA and why Louisville is on the outside looking in. But to your point, if a team has to withdraw and they will have until Tuesday to do so, that's the order. Louisville, Colorado State, St. Louis, and Ole Miss. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, no, that, that's really what frankly stands out to me. And, you know, sometimes, Dan, we over kind of sell the, the concept of a quote unquote bid stealer, which is a team in a power conference that would have gotten in if they hadn't won their conference tournament. But we saw two yesterday on, F- on Fox, excuse me, Georgetown. They would not have been in. Obviously, Oregon State would not have been in. And so now we see the real world ramifications of that with Louisville and Colorado State both on the outside looking in, and I hate to kind of put it so crassly, but essentially hoping somebody comes down with COVID, unfortunately, but that's the reality of the situation. But, you know, we we talk about bid stealers. Sometimes it's oversold, but in this case, that's exactly what happened. That's why those two teams are out. How shocked you were you, George, that UCLA got in? Uh, About a – I I thought they had a 50-50 shot. I I do like the fact that they ended up in the play-in game, though. You know, it's not necessarily yeah. it like I I think that that's where that you felt like that they were good enough to be in in the tournament, but they went out in the conference tournament a little bit too early. So throwing them in the playoff game in the play in game was, you know, I, I thought a reasonable move. It's it, there's going to be a lot to dissect 
It is Fox Sports Radio. It is our Selection Sunday special. He's George Reister. That's Aaron Torres. I'm Dan Beyer. You can get all of us on social media. Your snubs, who you love, who you hate in this tournament. Find me at Dan Beyer on Fox. You can find George on Twitter at George Reister. And you can find Aaron on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres. Guys, I don't want to toot my own horn. <laughs> But I'm going to toot my own horn. I got the top eight seeds. I thought it was going to be Michigan in the same region as Alabama, Illinois in the same region as Houston, uh, Gonzaga and Iowa is the one, two, Baylor and Ohio State. And I do have a receipt. I have a tweet from like two hours ago, which, and, and I think I actually even got the regions right, which I don't think was too, was, was that difficult considering they're all going to be playing in Indianapolis anyway, but. Don't want to toot my own horn, but uh, hey, how about a round of applause for me? Let's. I'm just. I'll, I'm Barry Horowitz in myself and patting I, myself. I will on the say back. this, Stan. The fact that off the top of your head, you knew that Iona was the only team that had not been announced. Now, I know <laughs> yeah, that was whole, that was pretty clutch. That was yeah, that was some uh, next level stuff there. I mean, I know they got a Hall of Fame coach, but man, like I, you know, I'm just sitting here like, oh, I guess UCLA's in. Who does out? What does that mean? And you're just like, yeah, hey, where's Iona? Well, we we got all 67. Go ahead. <laughs> there's a, there's a secret to all this, and I think that and when you watch enough selection shows. You know where you know where really the nitty gritty is, and it's usually five twelve, six eleven. Those are where the real answers are revealed. Most of the other times are automatic qualifiers or teams that we knew were going to get an at large bid because they're one of the top, you know, five ten teams in the country. But when you get to six and seven, you kind of find out the nitty gritty. The other thing about it, when you're talking about a tournament with no Kentucky, with no Duke in it. You got to think of storylines, and Rick Pitino sure. is a storyline. So, so I was just lucky that Rick Pitino happened to be the the head coach at Iona, and was like, "Wait a second, we hadn't heard about the Gales yet and where they are." So, so that that helped me out immensely as uh, Team sixty seven and sixty eight were revealed. Coming up next on our Fox Sports Radio Selection Sunday special, did the little guy get left out again? We'll talk about it next year on Fox Sports Radio. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio. Radio. It is Selection Sunday. We've got you covered here on Fox Sports Radio. The Field of 68 has been released. Welcome to our Selection Sunday special. I'm Dan Beyer. He's George Reister. Aaron Torres with us as well. We're with you for the next hour plus here on Fox. You can reach us on Twitter. I'm at Dan Beyer on Fox. Get George at George Reister. Get Aaron at Aaron underscore Torres. Uh, guys, and Aaron, I'll, I'll start with you. In looking at who was on the outside uh, looking in, as as it was mentioned, the NCAA Tournament uh, Selection Committee does have a a waiting list, if you will. They have alternates team that teams that could slide into a spot if a squad has to withdraw because of a COVID situation. Louisville is on the outside looking in. They would get the first alternate spot, if you will. Then it's Colorado State, St. Louis, and Ole Miss. But of that group, two of the four are from Power 5 conferences. We saw Wichita State and Drake get in. Not that the American Conference is is a is a mid-major by any means, but Missouri Valley Conference is considered a mid-major. You've got those two schools playing. Were you surprised at all that we had a mix um, as opposed to maybe heavy on Power 5 schools getting the last bids or vice versa? How do you view how that played out? So I will admit I am surprised. Um, You know, in this year, I think it would have been easy. There was no real out-of-conference for many of these teams to speak of, and it was hard for the small schools to get games against a lot of these real teams, against these big-name, big-brand opponents. So to get Wichita State, to get Drake in that that last four in, I thought was really cool. I will also say this, Dan. We all work in the media. Some stuff is driven by ratings and all that kind of stuff. UCLA, Michigan State as a play-in game, that does not feel coincidental. <laughs> it, it could have been Michigan State, Wichita State. could have been UCLA, Drake, but they went UCLA, Michigan State. I don't think that's coincidental. But even to just see those two names, those two brands on the, first four, the last four in, excuse me, I think speaks to how weird this year was. Yeah, and but I liked it, though. I liked that they didn't put Michigan State versus Wichita State or UCLA versus Drake. I think that that says that we're we're not just trying to get the big names and the power fives in. I think that they're saying, no, we're, we're trying to divvy it up equally and have the most deserving, like, like the two, like the two kind of bubble ish mm-hmm. 
a group of five teams or mid mid majors versus the two bubblish power five teams. So so I I thought it was right. Yeah, and in their defense too, as 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 we mentioned with Wichita State, I think they're enough of a name now. Not that you're going to cancel plans to watch Wichita State and Drake. But at least it's it, it's a name of somewhat you know recognizable proportions. Not saying that that they got in. I just I didn't want to make it sound like I was sliding Wichita State and being one of those schools because they've accomplished a lot over the last uh, decade or so. And you know th- th- their situation and making it through the season like they did with Greg Marshall now gone, really quite a run. But yeah, to the point when you have Michigan State and UCLA there. Uh, that that's what's going to draw you in, and and that's where like you know Duke for example was a thought to be a possibility when they were on the bubble, and obviously they did not end up making the field of sixty eight, but there was a lot of talk of just putting Duke in to get some eyeballs on that first four on that Thursday. It's going to end up being a a whole day event where you have those you know games played in, and I have no problem with that. I I, I like I actually think like. I don't think I don't feel sorry. That's the that's the right phrase, guys. I don't feel sorry for those power five schools put in those spots having to play in those games. I've never liked the sixteen seed play ins because I, I, I just I, I, I don't think that that's right. If you had if you had four you know, 12 seed matchups to figure out or a way to play in. I'd be much more for that than to have two matchups between two 16 seeds. So, so yeah, I'm all, I'm, I'm with you guys on that. And I'm with you guys with Michigan state and UCLA. It is a made for TV event and there was no coincidence there. Yeah. I don't, I was going to say, I I would agree with you, Dan. I don't like the 16 seed uh, either because it's like, dude, if you get an automatic birth, that's an automatic birth. Like, don't don't then try to water it down. I, I, I don't like that. Like, I think that if if you're going to have an automatic bid, then let it be an yeah. automatic bid because a because a play in game is not really in the tournament. You know what I mean? Like, you're kind in the tournament, but you're not really. In the <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think. It, it, and Aaron, just quickly, I'll let you wrap it up. But there's some badge of honor to getting maybe boat raced by forty. You know, like like, yeah. like there is, you know, to, or to well, be on the same court as a, as, a, as a power. I love the committee that makes the argument, well, you know, you get your own standalone game and you, you can say you won an NCAA tournament game. It's like nobody remembers who won that 16 seed. I'm with you. If you win your conference, I think you should automatically be into that field of 64. Let all those bubble teams play to get in as, a, as a, what do you call it, the, the outside teams trying to get in. The bracket has been released. All 68 teams placed. We've got the match. Matchups, we've got the controversy as well. He's Aaron Torres. Find him on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres. That's George Reister. Find him on Twitter at George Reister. I'm Dan Beyer. You can find me at Dan Beyer on Fox. What was the biggest mistake that the selection committee made and who's going to end up cutting down the nets? We'll tell you next year on Fox Sports Radio. Fox Sports Radio has the best sports talk lineup in the nation. Catch all of our shows at foxsportsradio.com. And within the iHeartRadio app, search FSR to listen live. Ah, yes. Selection Sunday is here. And, oh, it felt so, so good. The field of 68 has been released. May not feel good for the likes of Louisville and Colorado State fans and St. Louis fans and fans of Ole Miss They're on the outside looking in, but we focus on the field of 68. Welcome in. We are broadcasting live from the Farmers Insurance, Fox Sports Radio Studios. When you switch to Farmers Insurance, you could save a bundle. All you have to do is call 1-888-FARMERS. Get a quote today. We are farmers. All right. I want to start at the top of the bracket, guys, and and, and that's with the Gonzaga Bulldogs, and and not necessarily on on, did Gonzaga deserve a number one overall seed. We all know they did there was the one the one given that we knew was going to happen in this tournament but now they're in a region a west region is the top seed the two seed in that region is Iowa you've got an unbeaten Gonzaga team where we have known that the trials and tribulations of of entering a tournament unbeaten and finishing it unbeaten are really have only been accomplished by the Indiana Hoosiers in 1976 it's the last time that a team entered the tournament unbeaten and uh, ended up leaving the tournament as national champions how much pressure and we'll start with Aaron that you do you think that Gonzaga is under by being perfect heading into this bracket. 
I think it's a ton because the thing with Gonzaga, and I don't think it's fair, as I just referenced in the last hour, look, they've beaten Kansas, West Virginia, Virginia, Iowa all this season. But there is still, as dumb as it sounds, a segment of the population that believes that they're overrated and that they only get the the seeding that they do because they play in a terrible conference. And if they played in the SEC or the – you know, they're an incredible program. But the fact that they are still trying to knock down that door, win Mark Few a national championship – all doing it while they're undefeated, it's a lot of pressure on them. I, I know we talked about it a little bit last hour. I don't think it would have been the worst thing for them to have lost that game to BYU the other day. I know that certainly getting tested was a good thing for them, but I'm telling you, they, they have a lot of weight on their shoulders right now. Yeah, they, they, they do. And, and I think that it's funny that people consistent. Oh, if they had to play in a big conference, if they had to play in a big conference, they w- would probably win that big conference too. B- because you see what happened, especially this year, when they played anybody else who's supposed to be really good, they stomped them in the mud. Uh, so, mm-hmm. and that's what good teams do. So it's and it'd be different if they were playing close games in conference. No, they are molly whopping everybody it, in conference, out of conference, anybody except for BYU in the in the semifinals, and and that was just an aberration. And they still won the game. So I, I, I think it's hard to knock them because they're not your typical mid, mid-major. mid But, I mean, like, this isn't Cincinnati in the American where they still play some close games in there, even though they're a really good good team. It would be like Cincinnati winning every game in the American by, like, 30 points. <laughs> sure. And, and I think that there's a big difference from being a mid-major program or – being a big time program playing in a mid major conference, and I think right, that's yeah. where Gonzaga is. Like they they play in a mid major program. They put out draft picks every year. Like they're putting out lottery. Yeah, picks. yeah. Like the, like there is there is nothing mid major about them. I'll give you guys a stat that I don't. You guys might know because we all work in sports. There was obviously no NCAA tournament last year, but of the last five NCAA tournaments that have been played. There is only one program that has made the second weekend of the NCAA tournament in each of the last five NCAA tournaments. It ain't Duke. It ain't Kentucky. It ain't Kansas. It's Gonzaga. Five Sweet 16s, three Elite Eights, a Final Four, and a National Championship game appearance in the last five NCAA tournaments that were played. Aaron, Aaron, the only reason why that happened, though, is because they play in the West Coast Conference. <laughs> that That's the only anybody. reason. They, they, they have consistently – look, look, they're giving them the easiest path th- this year, even though it runs through every big-name program that you want to see. I, I think that we sometimes fall back – because I do think that there is a difference in football. I do think that there's a difference of running through the SEC, running through the Big Ten or the Pac-12, as opposed to maybe the American Athletic Conference or um, you know Conference USA. If so, like I, I do think that there's there is a difference of week in and week out of going through those programs. I don't think that's the case in college basketball. Like at, at, at least as much where. You, you would you look at a schedule, and I'm just you know, I was going to use the Big Ten as an example of this team goes here. I'll use the Big Twelve. Usually, a top five team goes to Kansas. Usually, loses. Right? I mean, I mean, most of the time. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, who goes to Allen Fieldhouse and beats the Jayhawks? Like very few teams. Like stuff like that is accepted. So if you were to say, "All right, Gonzaga, go play in the Big 12, Yeah, you may not win it at Allen Fieldhouse, but nobody else does anyway. But you're also mm-hmm. going to end up winning all those other games. I think it's completely different. I think sometimes we connect college football and college basketball, and I think that they're just, I, I they're apples and oranges to me when you're when you're trying to compare how well a team would fare in a season and and plus there's more games in college basketball as well there's so much riding on the line in college football that can cost you with a loss where a loss of Gonzaga played in the Big 12 or Big 10 wouldn't wouldn't hurt them as we've seen other schools you know be dealt losses of that same ilk well and that's what I would say is yes it goes without saying if Gonzaga was in the Big 12 they would not be entering this tournament undefeated or almost certainly not 
Um, but that doesn't mean that to get to this point 27-0 and with the wins that they have doesn't also make them a great team. And, and by the way, previous years, uh, the year that Zion Williamson was at Duke, they only lost one regular season game with Zion, I believe two, I think maybe two total, and one of them was against Gonzaga. Uh, Kansas, West Virginia, uh, all uh, both teams that are really good that are top what? Top three seeds in this tournament, top four seeds, whatever it is. Um, uh, Gonzaga beat them both on a neutral court. So two things can be true. Yes, they would not be undefeated, but it doesn't mean that they're not awesome and absolutely, of course, capable of winning this national championship. Yeah, but would they be undefeated? I mean, it is entirely, it's unlikely, I like, like I believe that it's unlikely that they would be undefeated. But I don't think it's impossible because we, we have have seen teams on rare occasions enter the uh, season either into the tournament either undefeated or with one loss. So it's not like it hasn't happened. It's just very, you know, it's it's rare. With Gonzaga being the the known portion of it, I, I I can I can push them aside and get to a bit of the unknowns with the top seeds. I was a bit surprised that Baylor got the second overall seed. I understand the arguments for it, but I would also make an argument, and and this goes against my my, my thought process, guys, because I did like that the tournament selection committee did away with the last ten games. They they moved away from that and really took your your whole field of work. But Baylor doesn't seem to be the same Baylor team after that COVID uh, stop, and Illinois has just been on a different level. And I know they got pushed to overtime today, but they got pushed to overtime by a team that is also a number two seed in the NCAA tournament. I was a bit surprised that Baylor got the second overall seed. It doesn't, doesn't matter when it comes down to it. I did think that maybe Illinois would get that number two seed uh, with Baylor at the number three seed. But were you guys surprised that Baylor got number two at all as the overall seed in the bracket? I, I, you know, it's so interesting and it's funny because this is what we led our number two with was, do, is anything going to change whether Illinois or Ohio State wins this game? And I, I think that probably played into it. I think there's no doubt to your point, Dan, that one, Baylor isn't the be- isn't the same team since they came out of that COVID pause. And two, that Illinois might be the hottest team, especially relative to the competition that they've had to face going into this tournament. But I do still think if you look at the totality of Baylor's uh, body of work, they do have a head-to-head win over Illinois from back in December. That's a completely different deal. We get that. Uh, But I do think when you talk about a team playing in the Big 12 as good as they were to get through with one regular season loss and obviously a loss in the conference tournament, I don't know that I'm totally surprised that they're the number two seed overall. Yeah, yeah, I I wasn't surprised either i mean because some of the other teams had had flaws and when you do consider the last 10 10 games right i'm sorry if if you're not going to just consider the last 10 games michigan didn't even make their conference tournament like 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 i think that final yeah title game yeah yeah that 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 matters and and Illinois, they're not unblemished on the the uh, season either. So wh- while they've been playing, they finished the season hot. Like Baylor had the best overall body of work. Like and if we're looking at it, kind of s- similar to a college football thing, right? Where you've had times where you've you've had teams come on come on at the end of the season that may have dropped a game or two early and you're sitting there like this is clearly at this point one of the mm-hmm. best four teams in all of college football but then you're like well should they be in because they're one of the best right now or a team that has just gotten it done all season like that's to kind of been the way Notre yeah. Dame has gotten in and other teams have gotten out at times yeah and, and and the out is the best word because the format of the NCAA tournament does give the committee an out and I'm not saying that they use the out I actually I agree with it I in in in, in seeing in seeing how it played out, and to Aaron's point, Baylor beat Illinois earlier this year. And if you're not going to take that result into account on how you're seeding, then there's no point in even playing the games. Because then all that matters is maybe how you're playing in the stretch run heading into the tournament. I thought maybe just because of what happened to Baylor with the, the just how they were playing and the COVID stop and how good Illinois, I was curious to see if it would, if it would sway the committee, but I commit, uh, commend the committee 
for recognizing, all right, if we are going to separate, how are these teams going to be separated when they're so close? And head-to-head's the best way to do it because that that gives you the answer. And sometimes with some of these these matchups, you know, Michigan is is a unique case because Michigan lost to Ohio State, as George said yesterday, in the semifinal. So maybe if the Buckeyes win today, maybe they have a case to it. But not too long ago, Michigan ended up going to Columbus and ended up beating up and beating Ohio State in in a great college basketball game we saw about two or three weeks ago question now with illinois is what do you do without isaiah livers so there's there's a lot of stuff that you could move around but i actually do commend when it goes back to the baylor illinois situation of hey if there is a tiebreaker or if it's close maybe just look at what they did head to head and that gives you your answer yeah and that goes back to where this happens in football i think more than in basketball where you have People, pe- people say, well, 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 I believe that if they played again or if they played 10 times, who would win? It doesn't matter who would win 10 times. Like as long as it wasn't some like officiating, like clear officiating mishap or some or a player was out in the game, you know, like one of one of their main players or something dramatic that clearly impacted the the, the uh, game where it was like, oh, it, it, it was played underwater in dim light. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like and the coach was suspended and, you know, and the, the, and they and they left their somebody stole their jerseys and they had to wear brand new shoes like something extenuating and you're like oh, okay well that makes sense but if if everything is equal and fair you do have to take the re- results and stop playing this oh well if they played 10 times it doesn't matter they only get to play once and the better team won that day He's George Reister. That's Aaron Torres there. You're hearing Aaron on a special Sunday edition of Fox Sports Sunday as he joins us as the Field of 68 was revealed. If you want to hear Aaron at other times at Fox Sports Radio, you can always check him out. He and Arnie Spanier every Saturday night, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 Pacific, right here on the network. I'm Dan Bayer. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Bayer on Fox. Find Aaron on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres and find George on Twitter at George Reister. It is Fox Sports Sunday. And coming up next... Is the wacky year of college basketball likely to lend more upsets into the NCAA tournament this time around? We'll talk about that topic next year on Fox Sports Radio. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio. 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 Hey, this is Jason McIntyre. Join me every weekday morning on my podcast, Straight Fire with Jason McIntyre. This isn't your typical sports pod pushing the same tired narratives down your throat every day. Straight Fire gives you honest opinions on all the biggest sports headlines, accurate stats to help you win big at the sports book, and all the best guests. Do yourself a favor and listen to Straight Fire with Jason McIntyre on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Fox Sports Sunday, our Selection Sunday special rolls on here on Fox Sports Radio. I'm Dan Beyer. He's George Reister. Aaron Torres joining us today as we have got you covered live from the Farmers Insurance Fox Sports Radio studios. Call 1-888-FARMERS to switch and you could save a bundle on your auto insurance. The last schools in to the big dance with the at-large bids. Wichita State and Drake will play in one of the first four games on Thursday. The other matchup has Michigan State and UCLA when it comes to at-large large bids having to play in the first four. That means schools like Louisville, Colorado State, St. Louis, and Ole Miss are on the outside looking in. Also, Duke is on the outside looking in. Uh, George, I ask you this. Will you miss Duke not being in the NCAA tournament? Yes, and I think a lot of people will as well. Well, actually, not, not this year because Duke being in the tournament for most people means – aside from Duke fans, means that they get a chance to root against a team, right? And and, and they get a team to uh, hate. Oh, man, I hope Duke gets knocked off. Be, and people bring their A game against them. But this year, with the inconsistencies that Duke showed, I think that it put them in a situation to where, like, if they had been in the tournament, like, eh, it's like, oh, oh, you you beat Duke, but they, they were bad this year. Like, it, it doesn't give – fans that same you know energy all the ones who hate duke because you either love duke or you hate duke like there's no way there's no middle ground so i i think it for the people who hate duke it would have taken away some of the energy because they were bad this year 
I just think that it, it's going to feel weird because I know that the tournament usually starts on Thursday, Friday, but Friday, Saturday, whatever. I mean, it's pretty set in stone. That primetime 7 p.m. Eastern yep. tip-off, it's going to be due. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's going to be, I think, to me, the first time that – because, you know, you see a bracket and we're so caught up in what does this mean for Gonzaga and Illinois and this bubble team is out and this bubble team is in um, that I, I don't think it's going to be till this tournament actually starts and – Coach K is going to be on the side of a milk box. You know what I mean? He's going to be nowhere to be found. And so well, I – go ahead, George, because that's, yeah. th- that's what I just think is that I, I don't think I'm going to realize it until we actually have this tournament and Coach K is nowhere to be found. See, I, I think it's bigger than just Duke being out. I think it's the combination of Duke and Kentucky being, being out. You know what I mean? Like that Duke-Kentucky are out. Like that these are two of the four blue blood – uh, teams, you, you got North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, and, and and Kentucky. Like two of those being out of the tournament, like that just doesn't happen con- on a regular basis at all. And then, and then if you if you had had a third one of them, one of them out, like that would have been crazy. And then you add in UCLA, who used to be like, I mean, they are a blue blood sort of, but not in the last, not since ninety five. They haven't won, so so they've lost a little bit of the of the luster. So imagine if. Uh, if Duke, North Carolina, no, no, I'm sorry. If Duke and K- Kentucky were out, and then you had had like UCLA and Michigan be, um, and Michigan State be be out too, who are kind of in that second tier of blue bloodish kind kind of schools because they were on the verge too. That would have made it really weird. The, this this is how how I I view it because we've actually seen a Kentucky team be an eight seed before. Granted, they went on an amazing run, but they were an eight seed. We've seen them playing a four five matchup before. And to me, that didn't draw me in. It was, it was, or saying like, oh, thank goodness Kentucky's in so I can root against them. It's like, oh, they're a four or five seed or they're an eight seed. And then when they keep on winning, maybe I'm going to root against them. And I think it's the same thing with Duke. To the point that, George, that you started with, when Duke's a one or a two seed, they are absolutely public enemy number one when it comes to everybody else. But if they would have came in this tournament as an 11 seed or a 12 seed, I just don't think it has the same cachet as them being. And, and honestly, I think most people only care about their brackets than, than, than Duke being in or not. Sure. I, and, and that's truly of just of how it is. So I don't think, I don't think Duke's going to be missed. I don't think Kentucky's going to be missed. I just think that people like us are glad that there's a tournament and people who fill out the brackets are just going to be rooting from their bracket for their brackets. And so if they don't pick this Duke this year because they're not in it, maybe they hitch their wagon to another blue blood like Kansas and say that Kansas is my school or maybe Kansas is the school they root against. Who, who knows? But I just I don't think in the grand scheme of things, Duke is such a huge brand. It's the biggest brand in college basketball. Duke and Kentucky are. But when you when you get down to it and when it gets down to this tournament, I just don't think they're going to be missed. I, I, I really just... Considering we didn't even have a tournament last year, now that we actually have one, I'm more excited about that than being worried about Duke and Kentucky not being I'll t- in. I'll tell you this. is First of all, I, I think you're right, Dan, because – it is interesting even seeing the reaction from you know people in the media that I know that cover Kentucky or, or Duke or whatever. Uh, one, it seems like they're just as engaged as ever, which I think, uh, one, just speaks to exactly what you just said, is that we're just happy to have a bracket. We're just happy to fill stuff out. Uh, and we're happy to, 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 to pick teams and root for them. Uh, I think it does help, by the way, that with Kentucky that Louisville was the first team out of the NCAA tournament. So that maybe gave them a little extra juice there uh, as they get set to fill out their brackets. But the more more I think about it, the more I do think you're right. I, I think it's going to feel weird, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, yes, you have your school, the school you went to, the school you grew up rooting for that you'll always pull for, but after that, it's all about the bracket. And so if if you ha- if Duke has Zion, you're picking Duke to go to the national championship and you're rooting for Duke. And if, if you don't think they're good, then you're rooting against them. So I see the point you're trying to make. Can, can, I, can I bring up a point? A- a- am I the only one that this happens to? Where I will make my bracket, right? And because of some either human interest piece or, you know, like liking the way that it that a, that a team plays, I I inevitably end up like while I'm watching games rooting against my bracket. <laughs> like See, I, like I, I, like I like yeah. I'll, I'll have Loyola Chicago and I like the whole story then I'm like I'm rooting for them to beat the team that I have winning the championship. 
See, I thought what you were going to say was when you pick against teams in your bracket just because you don't want to watch them. And uh, I bring it up because when I was on with Dan and Jonas the other day, we were talking about Syracuse, and Jonas asked me about Syracuse. I said, I hope they don't make it just because I don't want to watch them. And uh, I'm looking at their draw right now, and I actually don't think San Diego State is the worst matchup for them. And I could just see the scenario where they go back to the Sweet 16 and Bayheim's doing you know weird stuff on the sidelines, and i got to watch them for three games longer than I thought. So that's where I thought you were going, George, is to well, pick against teams that, that you just don't want to watch. I'll, I'll give you a, a perfect example that is, I think, a little different than what we normally get. In, in, and to George's points of, yeah, because maybe a story is so good, a Loyola making a run, you're willing to cheer against your bracket I just remember in in one of the great games of, of recent memory and Virginia had a bunch of them in their tournament title run in 2019 but you go back to that game against Purdue in the regional final and yep. I'm a big I'm a big 10 guy and so even growing up you know Gene Cady getting to a final four in Purdue and 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 listen Tony Bennett grew up you know about an hour away from from my hometown the Bennett family in the state of Wisconsin is such a huge family uh, such a popular family for for what they've done throughout so many years but in watching that game I had Virginia in my bracket, and I find myself wanting Carson Edwards to hit these threes because I just think of the 40 years you know, that Purdue fans have had to deal with it, and then their heartbreak comes out. I was just even watching an ACC special they did on Virginia, and I'm like, man, Purdue was so close. Completely understand, but not even with a not even with a Cinderella. I just got wrapped up in for, for a school of just making it to the Final Four, which is so important to Purdue. Which, by the way, I think Purdue's going to get there in the next five years. I'll just put that right now. At some point, I think think they'll get to a final four but to, to be so close like they did against virginia yeah i i rooted against my bracket absolutely uh, we're live for the farmers insurance fox sports radio studios call 1-888 farmers to switch and you could save a bundle on your auto insurance he's aaron torres he's george reister we're all hanging out on this fox sports radio selection sunday special we'll dive more into the bracket and yeah we'll tell you if those upsets are set to happen but it's been a crazy year in college basketball crazy week in college basketball. Duke drops out of the ACC tournament. Virginia has to drop out. Kansas ends up dropping out. Just an just absolute crazy year as, it, as we know that it has been. I have a feeling, guys, this is just my, my gut sense. I don't think we're going to see as crazy of an NCAA tournament as uh, we are maybe accustomed to. I, I, I For some reason, I, I, I could be wrong. I could be misjudging this. I could be looking at it from a different angle. But I just think that even with the limited sample size, I don't know about a lot of the unknown teams that we've got. So those Cinderella's in the 12, 13, and 14 seeds, I'm not too sure about them. And honestly, I don't think the committee knows. I don't know if the committee really fully grasps how good of a team is at, at a 12 seed or a 15 seed, but maybe they have a better idea of who the better teams are. It's one of the reasons why I'm not too sure that we're going to be getting uh, – as many upsets as we're accustomed to because I think with the limited sample size and the limited ability to play non-conference games, we really didn't really get a good opportunity to find out about these smaller schools that are in the dance. And I think that they know more about the bigger schools, and I think that could lend for a, a more chalk bracket. Do you think there's any validity to that argument, Aaron? I. I do think those top teams are just significantly better than everybody else. Uh, Baylor, Gonzaga, uh, Michigan, Ohio. I, I think that, that those top probably two seed lines, I'd include Houston in that, are good. I do think when you get to those four, five lines, I don't even know if they're, they're major upsets, but look, Virginia has been flawed. I know they won the ACC regular season title, but one, we got to figure out who they're even going to have eligible to play in this tournament because of the COVID stuff. But they ha- they weren't playing great basketball ball before they got to Greensboro for the ACC tournament. Villanova, we know, is banged up. Creighton has been up and down all year as a five seed. Texas is a three seed, wins the Big 12 tournament, but was really the second half of the year not playing great. Tennessee, another team is a five seed. So I, I think if you're looking for those historic upsets that we will remember forever, the two seeds losing to a 15, I mean, a, a, a re kind of do over of the Virginia UMBC deal, I don't think that's happening this year, but I do think those four five seed lines by by nature are always going to have flawed teams but i do think a lot of those teams are extra flawed this year yeah see dan 
You were doing such a great job. <laughs> no. You were doing such a great job. Like you, like you nailed the Iona last team in. Like you were on fire today. I mean, well, this this probably has been one of your best days of of twenty twenty one until now, right? That's y- yes. And I do believe that we will have significantly more. All right. Upsets based uh, and I'm well, basing it on well, the here, fact. Do, no, do me a favor. Hold on a second, okay? Because I don't want you to give any upsets away. We're going to do that at the at the uh, in about ten minutes or so. And joining us right now, his team is a two seed in the NCAA tournament, representing the West Region. He's the head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Fran McCaffrey joins us on our Fox Sports Radio Selection Sunday special. Hey, coach! Thanks so much for coming on today. How are you? Doing great, guys. All right, so you're a two seed. You've got Grand Canyon, the 15 seed. Was the two seed in the Gonzaga region? Is there is there any? What were your initial thoughts? I should say in being placed in the same region where a top seed is the undefeated team and the lone undefeated team in this country. Any issues with you being placed in the bracket with Gonzaga as the number one seed? No, I, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I pay zero attention to seeding. I just want our team to be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. I think we spend too much time debating what is really a, an irrelevant topic. Uh, it, you get in here, you're going to be playing a really good basketball team that won their way into this tournament. And you better be ready. I don't care if you're a 1, 2, 3, 14, 15, 16. You, you better be ready. Because I've been... I've, I've been in a situation where I've been a lower seed and we've beaten higher seeds. Uh, and, and, you know, you better come with your best. Uh, and, and once this thing starts, what, what, what does seeding have to do with anything? Uh, no. you, you have to beat somebody really good. And you better, you better be ready. You better have the right mindset. Oh, speak, speaking of mindset, Coach, uh, we have heard people talk about that the that the bubble is going to be similar to what the NBA players went with, except for there's no golfing, there's no excursions and all that. It's going to be limited to the uh, hotel and no food opportunities, really, except for what's in the hotel. Like, So what kinds of things are you preparing to do to keep your team mentally folked in, focused and locked in for what? hopefully a long tournament run well it starts with you know we just got our COVID test uh, and we were able to meet and then uh, once the COVID test happens now we're in quarantine for the next two days so what they have to do is you know be computer savvy and get on and watch what they can as we the coaching staff breaks down our opponent separately so I'm in my hotel room. The other coaches in our hotel rooms. We're all watching tapes separately and getting ready to play our next opponent. Uh, they can't leave the hotel. Uh, we can only eat the food that's provided by the hotel, and it has to be independent and in your room. So the food will be delivered to your room. Uh, you know, so you know, from that standpoint, clearly, guys, it's, 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 it's very unique. You know, some of the most fun you've had is to be able to, walk around town and, and, and see your families. But the reality is and I'm really impressed, and I actually just bumped into Danny Gavitt, just so impressed with he and his staff and, and the incredible planning to provide an opportunity for these kids to enjoy an experience that they'll remember for the rest of their lives, one that they earned. And last year I remember how we felt. We earned an NCAA bid for a tournament that never took place. And, and I know what that disappointment was like because there was one player in particular who, who deserved to have that opportunity and he never did. So I'm just so thankful that we've been able to pull this thing together in an incredibly professional way and have the tournament. And, and so, yeah, it's a little bit different, but, it, you know, we're all thrilled to be here. We all accept the protocol and, uh, you know, we'll just get ready to play the next game. That's all. 
This is Fox Sports Sunday. I'm Aaron Torres, joined by George Reister and Dan Beyer. Coach Fran McCaffrey from Iowa is joining us. Iowa, a two seed. They open with Grand Canyon for the NCAA tournament. Coach, I, I don't want to dwell too much on the negative, but I, I, in a lot of ways I want to emphasize the positive. You just talked about everything that your players have had to go through this year just to get to this point. How proud of you are you? How proud are you of this group? Because, and maybe even take the fan behind how limited these players have been in terms of social interactions, family interactions, things like that, because college basketball has certainly been unlike any year prior to this season. You're, you're, you're so right, and, and I, I am incredibly proud because they committed to one another You know, pretty much since we started doing uh, daily testing at our institution in the summertime. They said, okay, guys, we're going to go to daily testing and we're going to be with each other. We're going to commit to one another to have a great season in the best league in the country, get our team to the NCAA tournament, and experience what we didn't get to experience last year. Now, there's a lot of things that they didn't get to experience that you know you would expect any 20, 21 year old to have the opportunity to enjoy. You know, when when school returns in late August. And, you know, football weekends and opportunities to go after a big victory on a Saturday and and go out to dinner with your family. All of these things that we have taken for granted for so many years, these kids did not get to experience. So when you talk about, yes, I'm proud, I'm so incredibly proud at the discipline that they showed and the understanding of what it takes. Because it's one thing to do it for a short period of time, but it's another thing to do it over several months. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're just so excited to be here together and, and, and excited for the opportunity to compete. Fred McCaffrey, head coach of Iowa, wrapping up here. I, I'm just curious, how did your team respond when, when Jack Nungy went down um, w- with his knee injury? What was that period like and what was already a challenging season? Uh, can you just uh, expound on that a little bit, on, on how your team reacted and then responded to, to his injury? Well, you know, it starts with their love for him as a person. You know, he redshirted two years ago, actually three years ago, and then last year he got hurt, blew his knee out. So we all felt for him. He was starting. Uh Long rehabilitation, as you know, when you do an ACL repair, uh, was really playing well, and uh, his dad passed away unexpectedly. And then a month or so later, after he was really, really making a different basketball team, you know, he hurts his knee again in the Michigan game. I mean, I can tell you, I think to specifically answer your question, the moon in the locker room at halftime when we knew that Jack's season was over uh, was incredibly upsetting. Uh, and I think uh, those guys, you know, they, they put their arms around him. They told him they loved him. Uh, they told him they were going to fight hard for him. You know, and he's here with us. Still a huge part of our basketball team. will be a really good player for us next year. But it, those are the kinds of things that happen through the course of a season that define uh, a group of young men. You know, the the day of our first game, we attended his dad's funeral virtually. You know, that's not normally how you start a basketball season. So, uh, you know, we love him. You know, we're looking forward to getting him back next year. Right now he's with us. And others have had to step up. You know, anytime there's an injury, it's always the same mantra. Next man up. And he's right there behind that guy. And, and we've got some really good play out of our freshmen, particularly Keegan Murray and Patrick McCaffrey at the the front court positions. Iowa gets Grand Canyon on Saturday. Any idea where, Coach, or when? Has that information been been given to you? It has not been shared. I've been told it's going to be later on this evening. I don't know what that time is. Well, uh, we'll be we'll be waiting with bated breath because we can't wait to get this all settled. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We know it's busy. Congratulations on uh, on a great season and and best of luck into a, a tournament that we all can't wait for it to start. Thanks so much for the time, Coach. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate you having me on. Fran McCaffrey, head coach of Iowa. His uh, Hawkeyes, a two-seed in the West, 
and they will take on Grand Canyon coming up on Saturday. I'm Dan Byer. He's George Reister. Aaron Torres joins us as well here on Fox Sports Radio. We'll wrap up this Selection Sunday special coming up next year, plus get our national championship predictions from the guys. That next year on Fox Sports Radio. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio. 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 Fox Sports Sunday, our Selection Sunday special. I'm Dan Beyer. He's George Reister. Aaron Torres with us as well as we're live from the Farmers Insurance Fox Sports Radio studios. Call Farmers today for a quote. All right, guys, in the last few minutes here, uh, it, as you look at this bracket, and I'll go with Aaron first and then George, you can follow. If you want to pick a winner and give a reason why, that's fine. If there are matchups that you think or a team that can advance a, a, a ways in this bracket, let us have it. I'm curious on what strikes you the most as you look at this bracket and now as many of us do without the country, start to fill it out. Aaron, we will start with you. Now that the field is set, what is striking you the most and has your attention? You know, Dan, it's where we started, and I don't mean to be redundant here, but we, we talked about the pressure that Gonzaga's under, undefeated. So many people still question their resume. This is about as favorable of a path as you could have asked for. I mentioned it off the top. They have already beaten the two, three, and four seeds in the regular season of the NCAA tournament. Kansas and Virginia both, in theory, could still have COVID problems going into their games uh, You know, uh, in, in, a, in a Sweet 16, Elite Eight type setting. I think by that time you would hope that it would be cleaned up. But you just look at this draw. I, I just really... Uh, knock on wood, I really don't know, but uh, but I have real trouble seeing who really gives them problems. Maybe Creighton in the Sweet 16, but until we get to an Elite Eight, it's just really hard for me to see them, uh, frankly, even being challenged, let alone losing a game. Yeah, for, for me, the teams that I'm looking at, like I think that you're going to have more upsets based upon what we've seen in the college in the conference tournaments and that doesn't mean I don't think we're necessarily going to see Iona beat Alabama but I think that when you see Alabama play UConn or you know or that that those are the types of matchups that are going to go the other way because there's not enough uh, sample size isn't large enough of non-conference games which then will distort how people see them versus the results. I know that you don't want to look ahead, but that's what you do with a bracket. So you're going to look ahead. You're going to look at possible matchups. To think we could have an Illinois Oklahoma State Sweet 16 matchup is Ooh, to me juicy. is yeah I mean considering some thought Oklahoma State could have maybe have been a two seed uh, maybe end up being a three seed they end up being a four seed and and the way that Illinois is played we talked about earlier I think they have a really really good chance of of cutting down the nets and winning it all. But that Sweet 16 game could be the best game that we could see in the entire tournament, and it and it happens in the round of 16. So that that is something that that stands out to me. I wanted to come on here and say BYU, you know, look out for the Cougars and, and what they could do. But they've got the winner of Michigan State, UCLA. Then you could have Texas. Then you could have Alabama. And you know, who knows what the, if Michigan's going to make it or not? But so that Illinois Oklahoma State potential Sweet 16 matchup stands out to me. All right, guys, I'm picking Illinois. Aaron, if you had to pick a winner right now, who are you going with? Oh, it's so cliche. I'm going Gonzaga. I just think their path is sure. so easy. I mean, I'm looking even Baylor, North Carolina in the second round could be a challenge, so I will go Gonzaga. And George, if you had to pick a winner right now, we won't hold you to it, but right now? Oregon. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> For George Reister and Aaron Torres, I'm Dan Beyer. This has been the Fox Sports Radio Selection Sunday Special.